Absolutely. At Andrews University, we seek every opportunity to live our mission, to seek knowledge, affirm faith, and change the world. It is with this mission in mind that we are embarking on a change today. A day for the entire campus to be engaged with our strong community through service. A day and a mission that is inspired by the life of our namesake, John Nevins Andrews, someone who was a scholar, single parent, and the first missionary of our church, someone who sacrificed through service. What is life's work and name to inspire us? And the university should have both residence and presence in America. With our presence, we hope to add value to our community. Our community should be a better place because we are here. Church Day is one opportunity for us to be engaged with our community. An opportunity for us to serve our community. An opportunity for us to give back to our community. We are seeking full participation from the entire campus, students, faculty, and staff. I invite you to join this cause. This cause will enrich the lives of our community. Let's change the world right next door, one person at a time. You can visit andrews.edu slash change hub to discover ways to be involved. Good afternoon. Welcome back. Um, this may be too revealing a question. You don't have to answer it. How many of you missed campus this summer? <laughs> no one's answering the question. I don't understand. Well, the reality is we missed you. So we stand on the brink of a brand new year, 1718. No one knows what it's going to bring, but we know that we are here with a purpose and a mission. And Dr. Luxton is going to talk to us about the next chapter this afternoon. Please welcome her second State of the University address. Thank you very much, Dan. Uh, I'd like to do a, a few introductions and announcements before I get into my, uh, the full address I'm going to give today. Um, could I see the hands of anybody who was not here last year? I mean, wasn't an employee of Andrews University, who is an employee now. All right, welcome. We're very pleased to have you all here. And uh, I want to give a couple of specific introductions. First of all, uh, Michael Nixon, our, our new Vice President for Inclusion and Diversity. So Michael, if you don't mind standing up and just waving to people. So those who don't know you will know you. We're, we're very pleased to have Michael join our team. And this is also a time when we normally introduce our ombudspersons. And um, we have Alinda, who is unfortunately home today, um, not feeling too well. But Alinda Bedney will be continuing as, as one of those. And Ruben, I don't know if Ruben is here. Ruben Perez Schultz. Uh, Ruben is going to be our second ombudsperson this year. I'd like to give thanks to David Sadlerchak, who has been in that position for the last few years, but he felt he had other responsibilities this year, and so we've asked Ruben to take over that, and so there'll be more information out about that, but just so you know that those are our two individuals. For those of you who don't know what they do, basically, hopefully, you never have to use them or talk to them. <laughs> what it basically means is when you've hit a wall and you think everyone else is just not listening to you, then go and speak to them. But that's basically, and in a very simple way, to talk about what, what those individuals do. I'd like to make a couple of announcements too, uh, because that's important, but they don't quite fit into the thread of what I want to say later. Um, 
We had some good news today. Uh, the counseling and psychology program um, has just received word that it has been given accreditation by APA. So congratulations to them. Uh, I want to say that this is a really significant achievement, and this is for their PhD program. Uh, we've also had some other successes with accreditation during this year. The Masters in Public Health was also accredited during this year. So congratulations to the MPH program. And then, of course, congratulations to all of us because we had a successful Higher Learning Commission visit. So we can all applaud ourselves on that one as well. <laughs> Uh, that report, we will giving, be giving more of the details later. A lot of very positive things. In fact, the majority of the report, very positive. Only one concern was listed in the report, and that one was not surprising, and it related to our finances and the relationship between enrollment and finances and how we manage that going forward in the future. And on that one, we're going to have to do a uh, report in about 18 months on how that is going. Um, they felt that we had a lot of things that we had done and were doing, but because they were not yet at completion and we were not yet seeing the results, uh, they hit a pause button and said, we want to hear how that's going. But other than that, uh, last time round we had about seven things to report on, so hey, we're down from seven to one. So we should feel very, very good about that. And so thank you all very much for your participation in that process. I want to start by uh, reading a passage of scripture here. It's in John chapter 17. And it is, to me, a very poignant section of the book of John. Because as it's recorded in the book of John, this is the final prayer that Jesus has for his disciples, with his disciples, before the events of the crucifixion start rolling out. And it seems to me that this prayer comes very much from the heart of Jesus as he is speaking, as he is praying. Um, because he knows what his disciples need. And not only does he knows what his disciples need, but he know what, knows what we need. Because in verse 20, he goes like this. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be as we are, one. I in them, and you in me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me, and have loved them, even as you have loved me. Um, you know, there's... Lots of things that pull us apart. Even as a community ourselves, even as I just talk about it, finance. How easy it is for things to drive wedges between us. And there's even more things that try and pull us apart and drive wedges between us when we think of the wider community. I'm sure that all of you have heard over the last week, the events of Charlottesville, and the bigotry, and racism that was exhibited in that environment that caused so much pain, not just physical, but mental. And it's not just there. I don't know if you've listened to the news today. 13 people mowed down by a car in Barcelona, Spain. Just one more of a seemingly summer full of individuals who somehow have felt that their agendas and their rightness and their superiority makes it okay to behave in these kinds of ways towards other individuals. Sadly, it's a natural part of life. And as we begin this school year, I think it's very important that together we know that we are committed to a culture 
that is the culture of John 17, where we embrace each other, value each other, value our students, even those annoying ones. <laughs> but we value and embrace all of us as children of God who have value, equal value, and deserve respect and dignity. That's who we are. Um, I, we will have a statement out on our website after tonight, after this uh, event, um, giving just a formal statement of the university in relation to Charlottesville and what we want people to know as they come onto this campus this year about who we are. What I say there I think will lead hopefully into what I want to talk about now for the rest of, of, of this address and uh, it really is about our strategic plan. Um, but I think our strategic plan links very much to um, what we're talking about. Okay, am I going backwards? Okay, it seems to be, I seem to be on a rotating cycle here. <laughs> and I know people love that first, that front slide, but... Uh, <laughs> Okay, so our new strategic plan, you will be getting a copy of it as you leave here today. It's called The Next Chapter, uh, 2017 to 22. It is focused on our next five years. And um, there's so much detail in there. And I, I want to thank many of you who've sent me emails over the last few days saying, don't forget to say this in your address tomorrow. <laughs> uh, I can't promise it's all going to be there, but it will all be in the strategic plan you get as you, as you leave here today. I want to talk about the five specific goals. You know, we talked about story last year. I introduced the concept of us living in a story at Andrews University. And so this plan really is focusing on what we're calling five storylines. Because uh, planning and strategy should be something that's alive and got energy to it. And so you're going to see this. This is our first goal to transform the campus culture through focus on faith development, wellness, diversity, and inclusion. Um, our first goal, all about the campus culture and who we are. And the storyline, which is, if you like, the kind of vision of what we hope that story is going to be, reads like this. To live, work, or study at Andrews University will mean active engagement in a community that is passionate about being a caring, inclusive, healthy community of faith. That's kind of where we started with, with John 17 as well. Um, and I can't overestimate how important that is. Remember, I, one of the statements I made a year ago was, culture trumps strategy. If we don't have our culture and our community right and our attitudes right and our values right, nothing else is going to be effective or happen effectively. So I'm just going to give a couple of examples because you know there's things we do well. So by saying this, I'm not saying we don't do this. So let's kind of be a bit encouraging. So um, this is a statement from a student. Uh, some of you may know her. She's a senior in chemistry. She's an honor student. And she just recently wrote an article for Focus. And this is a statement that I liked, that I took from there. She said, Andrews has taught me the process of learning, praying, and growing. I want to be part of the Adventist church as it continues to do the same. I can contribute to our spiritual progress. That, as I come to the end of my time in college, is the answer to my initial question as to what is present truth. Uh, interestingly, she starts out by saying that when she came to Andrews, she really was at a point where she wanted to give up on faith and give up on the church. What is exciting about her testimony, she goes through it, is she includes pretty much everybody. She talks about how some of the chapels and chapel speakers have helped her. She has a huge amount to say, say about the honors program and the faculty who have taught her. And she has a huge amount to say about the general campus that helped her really ask the right questions and bring her to a point of personal commitment. Um, this is really what we should be about, all of us together, 
recognizing that we want to change lives so that when people leave here, they leave here with a desire to make a difference. So you remember that first statement talked about transforming the campus culture through focus on faith development, and the next word was, do you remember? Wellness. So here's another one. Exciting email from Dominique. I'm delighted, you can hear Dominique saying this, can't you? This was an email. I'm delighted to inform you that I was just notified today that the Exercises Medicine on Campus Advisory Group of the American College of Sports Medicine has identified Andrews University as a gold level campus for the second year in a row. Um, we all know that over the last few years we have been trying to focus on wellness as a core part of what our campus culture and community is. And Dominique's done a great job of guiding us through that. And we've seen some success in it. But it is important because eventually wellness is also just as faith is. You know, it's, it's all about who we are and, being, and our lives being better as a result of that. All right, and I have one more. This is from a student. And there's so many comments like this. There were some comments on the other side as well. That's why we want to focus on making ourselves even more of a caring community. But this is one that I like. How blessed our family has been to have you as our financial advisor. You've always been very organized. I like this honesty much more than we have been. And a wonderful calming influence when we have not been able to see how things will work out in the end. Anyway, thanks for being outstanding in your field. Um, how nice is that? Um, and that is really, really, when we talk about a caring community, and we rolled out the caring heart this last year, that's what we really want a whole community to feel like. Looking out to solve the problems of each other. Looking out to make a difference in each other's lives. That's the kind of campus community that I think brings us together in unity, looking beyond ourselves to other people. And again, a lot of that is happening, but it is also something we need to continue to do. And not just for our students, but for each other. And maybe you can turn to us and say, well, what about administration? Yeah, I'm sure there's things we need to do better too, and help us find that way, okay? This needs to be a whole community commitment. All right, so if I put it all together, and this is going to be my line for the day. Storyline one says, welcome. You are important to us and to God. And you can make a difference. Right, storyline two says, we want to define the Andrews University footprint beyond the Berrien Springs campus through collaboration with church, community, and higher education institutions. What does that transfer into our storyline? It says, Andrews University, the Seventh-day Adventist church, partner institutions, and the communities they serve will be richer because of the intentional engagement and influence of the university beyond its immediate campus. What that basically means is, when I go to the general conference and I meet people and I mention Andrews University, they smile. When we go into Berry and Springs or St. Joseph or Benton Harbor and we say, oh, I come from Andrews University, they smile. Um, that's kind of what, the, if you want to get what this actually means in practice, that's what it really means. It's us making a difference because of who we are as we reach out beyond ourselves. Uh, graduation was a, a wonderful experience for me in August. I've never quite had it this way. Um, there were so many people this August that came from all around the place who had never actually studied on our campus but who were graduating from us. And they were so excited to be here. From Kenya, from Uruguay, from Hawaii, from Trinidad, from Vietnam, they had actually identified with us to the point that they bought tickets and bought their families to come here to graduate. And they were so proud of being a graduate of Andrews University. 
That is what we do out there beyond ourselves and sometimes don't even realize the impact we have. Um, sometimes we feel overwhelmed because there's so many people that want to connect with us and we can't do it all. Um, but we do make a difference and we need to continue to make a difference as we look at ourselves internationally. Um, I'm going to give a focus now to one other department here. This is architecture. I, I see I have, we have some people from architecture here today. Uh, I think they're a wonderful example of a program that very intentionally connects the learning experience of Andrews with the mission of making connections and changing lives beyond ourselves. And uh, this year, they had a great year with their fifth year. <laughs> this is their master's program. Uh, they won the... Uh, CNU Charter Award, they've won that before. Um, but this was for their studio project in South Africa. And some of you may have heard of that because it was really initiated by a student that the whole of the program uh, worked with. And basically it was to transform a community in the shanty town in South Africa. And they won the award. They also won another award, well not award, but they were, it was, an, it was a, an honorable mention, actually, I think that's what that should say, for their clinic in a container for Congo. Um, and if you want to know more about that, there was a um, Kerry Kaskellen was walking around the container uh, with a video taken of him. It was on our, it was on, is it on our Facebook page? I think it's somewhere anyway. But it's out there. I, I got it in my inbox. Um, but it's very nice. So you might want to see what they did there. Um, solar panels, the whole thing. Container ready made, ready to go to the Congo to be put into operation happening in our architecture program. And not satisfied with that, this is another project they did. This is just the females of, of Andrew's team, along with a lot of uh, Muslim students in Jordan, where they went this summer to basically do a mural. It's a bridge-building exercise between Christians and Muslims working together with an art situation creating something and building bridges and having conversations. Um, so thank you for, to our architects for setting a great example of some of the things we can do as we consciously help our students and walk alongside them in connecting beyond ourselves. And then of course you saw a video, you saw most of the video uh, of Change Day. Um, you know, I, I know that for some of us, I put AM up there, actually I think it's AM and a little bit into the PM um, of, of that day. Uh, but I do hope that you'll engage with that. Because I do think that is a very important way, particularly in the current climate, where higher education is somehow being perceived as, as these liberal bubbles over here that don't connect. Um, this is a way of us saying to our community that our learning is not just in a vacuum, but we are using, but we are also here to reach out and connect. And uh, I really want to um, thank Desmond. Um, he's been leading a new committee, Community Engagement Council, co-chairing it with a member of our local community, Mrs. Audrey Lester, in really trying to kind of help see ways that we can embrace our com community in a more um, cohesive way. And he is helping connect with that uh, change day. So storyline two says the same thing, right? Welcome. You're important to us and God. And you can make a difference. Goal three. Position the university as a leader in teaching and learning. And you know, that's a little bit what this whole Faculty Institute is about, yesterday and today. And this is a nice long uh, phrase that you know was written by some of our academics to make sure we got all of the bits in here that we need to get in here. And we still may not have it completely right, but this is how it reads. In a competitive environment, Andrews University must be able to provide a flexible, engaging learning environment through faculty committed to the redemptive work of, of education. They will use both innovative and time-honored teaching methods using the lens of the teacher in advancing research and engaging with service. The result will be a transform transformational education experience. The learning at the core, but the learning connected to all the time to faith and also to service. Um, 
I've been talking to the chaplain's team, and you know we have a spiritual master plan. Some point in time, in the very near future, you're going to be getting something, maybe a bookmark that reminds you exactly what that is. You know, they're not isolated out there, as Alexandria Edge's testimony gave. We are hands in hands, the chaplaincy, along with what is happening in the classroom and what is happening on the campus uh, more broadly. So there's so much I could say here. You know, we've, we, we have often, um, and I think rightly so, recognized how much excellent work is being done in all our departments. Our graduates do very well. Uh, as you heard, we've got more accreditations this year. Um, we have uh, our undergraduate research is outstanding. Um, but I thought for this section, I just wanted to highlight one new thing because it was new. One of our new programs, first set of graduates coming through. And again, I like this email. Look at this. This is a student equivalent to the Professional Academy Award list of nominees for a category like Best Documentary or Best Animation, etc. See the fourth category down on the link? I can't even begin to tell you how happy I am. I am dancing in my office. <laughs> <laughs> and this is, this, this is a Student Academy Awards, which is a, a leg, very legitimate and very important organization. And you will see that I've gone down here with the fourth, uh, with the fourth thing, and right down, one from the bottom, Nina Vallado, Sisterly, Andrews University, right there among some of the top film schools in the country. I mean, this is amazing. Our first set of graduates. And what is even more amazing is, I don't know if you've seen this, seen this documentary, but what is more amazing about it is, I think it speaks so, again to the Andrews culture. Um, Nina is writing as the oldest sister of three sisters with a middle sister being autistic. And it is about her journey of understanding how to be caring and engage with the challenges that brings, um, both from a faith perspective and a human perspective. A very, very moving, I think, documentary, very, very well done. And, um, Kudos to the documentary film um, people as well for getting this level of work from a student by the time they graduate from undergraduate. In Actors Team, Business Department, 2017, uh, they placed third in their league at the Nationals this year. And uh, they've been doing well in recent years. Um, and Jacqueline is sitting on the front row here, one of the sponsors. Um, and this is the team, the place there. Again, trying to move beyond taking your learning and saying, okay, how does that make a difference? That learning, making a difference connection that is going on. So storyline three, two, the teaching and learning. In whatever area we are, it still means that same thing. It still means when every student walks in our classroom, it is welcome, we're glad you're here. Um, you're important to us. You're important to God. We want to make a difference in your lives so you can make a difference in the lives of others. That's what's happening in our church teaching and learning and driving our strategy. All right. Goal four. Increase the quality and depth of the student learning. There's five, by the way. Just so you, you don't think we're going on to happen. <laughs> Increase the quality and depth of the student learning experience. And storyline four, students have multiple options for their education. Andrews University must provide a student environment that makes the Andrews University choice irresistible. Some people say they don't like the term irresistible, it's too much. I love the term irresistible, <laughs> so it stayed in there. Um, <laughs> so, uh, I, 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 think it, I think it is a wonderful, um, again, the, the sense that this is the place people really, really want to be. Um, as, you read, as you'll read in, in our strategic plan, you see some of our bullets. We have lots of ways to try and make up what we're doing more engaging. Um, we have what's called the AU UFO, uh, which many of you in the faculty group particularly will have heard of, which is a real attempt to try and bring all of our learning experiences, both in the classroom and beyond the classroom together, to give focus to what we're doing. Um, the ACE group, a, a small group there, have been doing an amazing work trying to really think about how do we make this more welcoming and so on for us. Um, 
In the September, we're going to have a new spiritual life survey which goes out to all our students, really trying to find out what is really working for them and what is not working. So we can really be more analytical about how to make that side better. But my focus for this one is, is going to be um, explore and early college experience. Some of you have been involved in this. Some of you have seen this group around the campus. This is our early college experience group. It was 44 this year. And this is them, some of them in Chicago. Um, about half of them, just a bit half of, over half of them are seniors. So, and they're all coming in freshmen, that group. The other half are juniors or sophomores. Um, and going back to their own schools to continue, hopefully all to come back again. And um, look at the last two bullets here, first of all. We started this last year. Last year, we had 27 participants. Of that, 20 were seniors and all enrolled in Andrews in the fall. And all of them, so far, are pre-registered to come back this year. That's 100% retention. Six out of seven of the juniors from last year are registered to start head this year. That's a, that's a pretty high retention rate. Um, this year, 45 participants, I said 44, sorry, Aaron, uh, but, and we look to have the same ratios. That's pretty impressive. First bullet point, a few years ago, we started the Explore Andrews program to really try and put our arms around and say, say we were interested in the careers and lives of those that came in as freshmen and really didn't know what they were doing. Um, that's the group that we knew were dropping out. Um, and over that period of time so far, the first year retention rate has been 92%. And may have something to do with the fact that our overall retention rate in the last couple of years has risen, and last year was at highest ever of 87%. What is this saying is we've already begun to take seriously this sense of this total student experience that makes them want to be here, that is embracing them in many ways, and we want to continue to embed that more deeply because, hey, it's a lot easier to keep somebody here than it is to get someone new to come um, as well. Okay. So, storyline four means welcome. You are important to us and to God, and you can make a difference. And finally, for the strategic plan here, goal five. It says, engage in campus renewal and development to meet expectations of the campus for 2025. And, you know, a few years ago, our architecture um, faculty did a, a wonderful campus plan that really showed how our whole philosophy of who we are should also be shown in what our campus looks like whether it's the outside space or the inside space or the buildings. And that's something we still take very seriously. As you know, our newest project is the Wellness Center. Um, oh, sorry, I, I forgot the storyline. Let's go back. <laughs> storyline. Students and campus guests will experience an environmentally friendly campus that expresses its values, what I just said, through its physical campus spaces and provides state-of-the-art facilities for education, especially where professional spaces and equipment are required. And here is a, an artist's rendition of the proposed wellness center. Um, and uh, this is coming again from our architecture faculty that have been helping with this. Uh, we hope right now we are about, uh, I think, half a million of our 17.5 million short of our, our goal, uh, which we sh should be able to make. And so by spring next year, we hope to have the spade in the ground. And that's kind of our plan moving forward. So. And then after that, where do we turn? Uh, we turn to some of our academic areas that, that really we know are now out of best practice, um, and particularly, it's the pro particularly professional programs. So particularly, there's some work to do with architectures, uh, health professions, uh, music, um, and I'm forgetting one, and engineering particularly, engineering and STEM, that area. So those, that's where we'll be going next as we look at our next plan, and we're already beginning to start thinking about how we can roll those things out to the, those that are interested. So storyline five again means 
by a campus environment, welcome, you're important to us and to God, and you can make a difference. So that's a kind of very brief walk through the story of our strategic plan that we hope will help frame our story for the next five years. If you actually look at the document as you get it, there's a huge amount there. There's a lot more depth and detail and ideas expanded and so on, and a lot of people engaged in many, many ways. Um, many of you have been engaged in helping us frame where we want to be going. Um, yes, we need to solve our finances and, our, and the, the package with that, with our demographics and enrollments. Uh, yes, there's many things we need to sort, but we can't stand still. We uh, need to be moving forward in a direction which we think will transform us as we head into the future. I just want to say a couple more things. Um, those of you who were here this morning um, heard about pauses. When you're lecturing, you should suddenly, after about 50 minutes, give a pause, and I haven't been giving any pauses. <laughs> so what I'm going to do at the end, finally, is talk a little bit about pauses. Um, because in, in order to kind of frame the community we want and in order to hi keep highlighting the types of things that are important to us, so we don't just become an institution grinding its wheels, um, one of the things we introduced last year was stories. And we, we had our stories that keep rolling out three a month. And um, some people I think probably just delete. But I know that there's some people that read those and are really quite moved and inspired by them. We're going to continue that. We're going to add another storyteller in Michael. Uh, next, Michael's going to join us and be a storyteller. So we'll expand that, that, that team a little bit. So that will be good. So expect to see that. Last year, I introduced pop-up tea parties. Um, randomly, just kind of a tea party across campus to just whoever was there to come out and just have tea with them in British fashion. Uh, well, what we decided to do this year was a slight twist because we decided that that was, that was good and students really, particularly really seemed to like it. So did some of the faculty that came out and staff. Uh, but um, the afternoons are very hit and miss. So you can't have afternoon tea in the morning. <laughs> but there is something that you can have in the morning that has also got an English history. Anyone know what it is? If you've, been, if you know, if you've read The Hobbit, you'll know what it is. What the Hobbit liked doing. Oh, the second breakfast is another one. Yes, we're going a little bit further than the second breakfast. <laughs> we're going to Elevenses. So, so Elevenses, you can check it out. It's a legitimate word. You can find it on the internet. So Elevenses is a pause at around 11 in the morning to have a cup of tea, a biscuit, and a chat. And so we're going, to be, we're going to be doing some elevenses this year around the campus to again try and just get that feeling of people, hey guys, time to pause, time to engage, time to discover a little bit about each other, just time to talk together and build our community. So look out for elevenses. Then there was one more thing, a new one that we're going to introduce this year. And um, you know, we've, we've had this the caring heart uh, idea that we've introduced on campus and uh, so there's a lot more we can do. We, we are working with the staff particularly to try and, try and create a staff council which will help them, I think, feel more cared for, more, have more of a voice, working on several other things with the staff. But we've decided that we're going to introduce something and it's called the Heart at Andrews Award. And Every month, we're going to find four people. Are you going to help us, by the way? I'm going to give a website in a moment, because it's just going to be heart at andrews.edu. And we want you, every time you see somebody act in a way that represents who we are in our culture and our way of reaching out to people, we want you to send us a message. And then, for, we, then every month, we'll award four Heart at Andrews awards. It's actually quite a nice little check. Um, so, just to get us going, we're going to award for today, just so you get a sense of what we're trying to do. And each of these has a little story behind it, so I'm going to give a story behind them. Uh, first one, um, I had a long email from a student. Normally when you look at the size of it, you think, oh no, here's a complaint. <laughs> and this wasn't a complaint, this one said, 
I walked in, I want you to know, I walked into such and such an office and the person there didn't actually have the answer to my problem, but they did this and they did this and they took me here and they did this and then they came back and they did this and they did this and I didn't stop until everything I needed was sorted. Great model. So, our first award, I'm gonna give it right here, is to Glenda Patterson. How are you, Glenda? Thank you. <laughs> you want a picture of you as well? Thank you, <laughs> Thank you Glenda. All right, the second one. You remember that email I put up earlier on student finance? Well, I checked with Linda Bedney and she said, hey, that's not just one random email. This is a typical picture for this individual. So, Keza Ahaz. <laughs> Thanks, Kesa. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. <laughs> well, the third one was I was down at an alumni meeting, and uh, it's usually alumni, but at this particular meeting, we had a couple of families of prospective students coming. And one of the families stopped me afterwards and they told this story. They knew nothing about Andrews. They'd never considered about Andrews for their children. Um, but they happened to be in the Michigan area, and they thought, oh, hey, let's just drive through and see Andrews' campus. So they drove through, intending just to drive through and see that we are. And they made the mistake of parking their car and actually getting out, and they ran into somebody who said, hey, what are you doing? And they were chatting, and they explained. They said, oh, no, no, you need to see the campus properly. So this individual got one of those, what you call them, uh, golf carts, put the family in the golf cart and spent an hour with them, taking them around the campus, introducing them to everything, and they discovered, lo and behold, that we have a chemical engineering program, which they had no clue, we even had engineering. Anyway, they were so excited, they found out that we were down there for alumni meeting, they came along to our alumni meeting at Houston, and it looks very, very likely that their son, who is now a senior in academy, is likely to be here in a year from now. So, Francie. <laughs> wow. okay. And our last one for today is uh, someone who we've already mentioned, who has really kind of start, tried to spearhead and take some significant initiative in looking past some of the reputation that we may have in certain areas in the community, and just said, no, no, I'm gonna make sure Andrews has a great reputation out there no matter what, and put us out there. Desmond, first, you're the first person here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 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 oh, that's it. <laughs> so here it is, Heart at Andrews Awards, and it's heartatandrews.edu. Uh, you see somebody who you think, hey, they need to be recognized, please let us know. Uh, put it out there so we know and can recognize people, and we're going to find a way to make sure you know who's got the awards and why they've got it. Um, because this is how we want to model the community that we want to be and the culture that we want to have at Andrews University that says to everyone, you're welcome, you're important to us and to God, and you can make a difference. So thank you very much. So as you leave today, uh, you'll be getting, picking up this. This is, this is our, this, uh, keep this please. Um, you know, don't file it. This is our strategic plan. Stick it in a place on your desk that when you're bored, you can just look through and it'll excite you for all the possibilities that lie ahead. And uh, let me have a word of prayer with you as we finish. 
Our Lord and our God, we thank you so much for all your blessings to us. Lord, we, we make mistakes. We do not always represent you the way that you would like or we would like. And we pray that as we start this new year that you will fill us again with your wisdom, uh, your prayer for us, that we may be unified, may it be one that we really seek to be ourselves. May we represent you well. May we recognize all the potential in every student who walk, walks through the doors here. And may, may we be there to fulfill that potential. Help us to change their lives so that they may also change the lives of others. Bless us, I pray, Lord, and thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. I think there's some food for you outside. Enjoy, and thank you for coming. <laughs>